Ah, yes, hello, dears. This is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective, and we are very happy and very honored to have an opportunity to share our two cents with you. So we're going to cover a lot of ground in a very short amount of time, and don't worry if you feel that we are going off on some tangents. We'll make our way back around. Oftentimes, we try to present information in a non-linear fashion, and we do this with intent because in order to process the information, you can't use your mind. You've got to process it through your heart center. So it's our devious little way of making you work a bit, getting you out of the third dimensional mindset and working through the multi-dimensional filter of the heart. And that really is what we want to talk about today, is processing information through your heart center. This is a grand game that you all are playing right now. It is a game of descension and reascension. All right, it's not that you're starting at the bottom and having to work your way up. You weren't relegated to the realm of Earth to work out all your stuff so that you could go and be a higher being. It doesn't work that way. You are divine source energy, each and every one of you. And in order to succeed at the game that you're playing, you are going to be required to declare yourself as such, to recall that you are a spark of creation that you have sovereignty, that you have power, and that you are grounding into your body this expanded awareness of who you are so that you can play this game of integration. Integration is the objective. You are living in a dimension of duality in which you have light, dark, positive, negative, male, female. You cannot, you cannot have one without the other. And it's not just this dimension which experiences duality, by the way. As you go up in dimensional structure, you are also experiencing duality in the higher dimensions, but the expression of duality is not as extreme. So where we are here in the ninth dimension, we are experiencing duality, but our extremes would be the difference between gray and medium light gray. It's not black and white with 50 million shades of gray in between. All right, so we don't swing to the extremes that you do, but we do still experience duality. And life is not a utopia here, because that would be incredibly boring. So at the soul level, we are all choosing to interact. We are choosing to have expressions and experiences which are different. And Earth is the ultimate expression of that variation because Earth is a grand experiment. It was set up by others in the galaxy as they were having difficulty through their, through their incarnational processes, if you will, integrating. They had a difficult time letting go of all judgment for light or dark because both light and dark, again, are part of source energy. So you can't judge either one. They're just expressions. They are just roles that one dons in order to have a unique experience. So Earth was set up so that these systems that were having a, a challenging time could play out their dramas on a smaller scale. So they could send their representatives to Earth to work it out. Earth has genetic material from thousands and thousands of worlds upon it. And along with that genetic material, comes all of the emotional experiences of all of the beings who have experienced that genetic line. So you have the ability on this planet to tap into a huge range of emotion and that doesn't exist anywhere else in the universe. Earth is the planet of emotion. And that means that it is a very, very challenging planet to be on. So first, we'd like to acknowledge the fact that you're all here and that you chose such a challenging assignment mm -hmm. and that you really are the masters of the game. You are the ones who have all the answers and you are teaching the rest of us how to undergo integration. You're doing it in the most challenging way possible. So if you can do it down there, it's going to be really easy for us to do it up here. All right, or in that other sector of the galaxy, which was having a really challenging time. You're learning how to work it out here at the small scale. You're writing the how-to book, as it were, and you are sending it back to that galactic area for them to then download that information and apply. You're doing all the hard work here for the rest of us. 
You've heard people talk about the cycle that you're all moving through and that it's the end of a cycle. But it's not just a cycle for the planet or the solar system or the galaxy. It is the end of a universal cycle. So what happens here is going to impact the entire universe. Everyone take a nice deep breath. It's enough for you all to think about doing it just for your personal lives, but when you start thinking about it at the universal level, uh, you know, it, the pressure seems a bit overwhelming sometimes. But the secret that you're learning is that you don't have to change the universe. All you have to do is work within yourself and work on what is getting activated within you, within your own body, within your own life. And as you work it out at your level, through the now, not through past lives, not through future lifetimes, but through what is going on in your life right now, you're able to take care of it and send that information off everywhere else because you're holographic in nature. Do you all understand the concept of holography? So when you have a image, all right, and you shatter that image, every shattered shard has the complete image on it. As you make an adjustment in one of those shards, it shows up in all others. So as you are changing, you are putting the information out there so that it is reflected in every other aspect of the universe. You've all spent many, many lifetimes where you have had a challenging time where you have tried to speak your truth and found out what the polar opposite of persecution, uh, of subjugation of truth, felt like. You all wanted to tr have a trial run so that when you got to this point where you were moving through a sector of space that has energy that is supporting, uh, that you're moving through a sector of space that is bathed in high vibrational energy, you're moving through a band of energy, a photonic energy, which is very, very high in vibration, when you're bathed in this high vibrational energy, you're able to let go of your stuff much, much easier. Now, in the midst of it all, it feels very intense because all your stuff gets activated and starts to vibrate. But this is the time in which you're getting universal support to let go and change the programs. So in those other lifetimes where you experience persecution, where you experience subjugation, whether you are on the receiving end or the giving end, because you've all had dark lifetimes, by the way. Don't think that you're just playing in the light because that would be very boring. You've all done some dark, dark roles to have that experience so you could understand it in its totality, so you could understand where the judgment was coming from, so that you could integrate it at this time. As you're having these experiences in the past, it was time for you to understand so that you, at this time, can let go. At this time, you can see how all the pieces fit together how your creation of these events was of service to you or is of service to you. What you're learning about yourself, what you're learning about humanity, what you're learning about source energy. This is all about letting go of judgment. Now there's a lot more that we want to say but we want to make sure that we have plenty of time to to answer your questions. Um, before we, we open up to that, we do want to say one other thing. One of the most vital pieces that you're going to need as you're moving forward is to be grounded in your bodies. One way of coping for a lot of you uh, at the very beginning was to keep yourself half out of your body. You thought, if I'm not in my body, then I can't feel. All right, I don't have to feel all the pain that's down here on Earth. I don't have to feel all of the pain that I'm holding in my own body. But now's the time that you're going to have to get in your bodies in order to do the work that you really came here to do. If you're not grounded in your body, then you can't complete the circuit. All right, You can't run energy through your body. It comes in and then it goes nowhere because it can't go all the way out and come all the way back up. Are you all with us on that? So one of the visualizations we'd like to give you in order to ground into your body is to imagine a beautiful pulse of golden white light streaming from the center of the galaxy. And as that light passes from the galactic center, 
It moves through Alcyon, which is the central sun in the Pleiadian star system. It is the central sun for you, for this sector of the galaxy. It is where all the information for all the events that have occurred in this galaxy are stored. You're passing through Alcyon. You're passing by all the other systems. That beam of light passes through your sun, passes by the planets in your solar system, penetrates the atmosphere of Earth, and enters through the crown of your head. And that beam of light is projected into one single cell within your body. And we want you to imagine that white light growing brighter and stronger. And as the cell tries to contain the brilliance of that light, it can no longer. And the light penetrates the walls of the cells and moves into the next cell. And this process continues until this light has moved all the way through your body. This golden light is your solescence. It is your brilliance. And you have now grounded it throughout your entire body. Once you get in your body, it becomes much easier to create and manifest. It becomes much easier to be in the moment, to check in with yourself, to see how you feel about what it is that you're creating. The process of manifestation is quite simple and it is continuous. It's going on 100% of the time for 100% of your activities. Most of the pulsing or the vibration that is being projected is happening at the subconscious level. So now what you're doing is just pulling it up to the conscious level to be aware of how you're feeling, what's triggering you, what is triggering your fears, when do you feel activated, and monitoring that. Checking in with yourself and saying, all right, I'm feeling anxiety over the situation. What's created that? My, my thought that creates that is fill in the blank. The first time you try that, you can say, I don't know, because it's a block. So by the fifth, sixth, seventh time that you say that to yourself out loud or writing it down, something is going to pop through your head. Your subconscious wants you to know. And it may not make logical sense. It may be something that seems completely out, outside of you. It may seem something that doesn't, doesn't make sense. You say, well, I know logically that I should be feeling this way, but this is the emotion that's coming up. And that's just it. We're talking about emotions here. And emotions are not logical. And the core of that emotion may be rooted in a past life or a future life for which you have at this moment no conscious awareness. But regardless of whether you have created something in a past life or a future life, your ability to integrate and change the vibration, all that power rests in the now. You cannot change the past or the future. Those are different timelines. And right now you are projected on a single timeline. That's the beauty of the third dimension. You think that you're only on one timeline, that there are no others going on because you're focused so intently on one. And that gives you the illusion of time. That gives you the illusion of a start and a finish. But in reality, you're constantly moving back and forth between timelines all the time. Your focus is going with it. So it appears to you, to your conscious mind, that you're only ever on one. Take a nice deep breath. So if you're in the now, if you've got a past life that you're trying to integrate or a future life that you're trying to integrate, all you have to do is look and see where you've created that exact same vibration in the now because you have somewhere in your life recreated that frequency. The only time you access a past life or a future life is if you are recreating that vibrational signature or if there is a skill set and information that you're trying to pull through to your awareness. So if you are recreating a vibration or a signature, here's how it looks. Within your energetic field are stored all of your records, every event that's ever happened to you and your family line. If you've got, say, the vibration of abandonment and it's in there and it's vibrating, it's not waving a lot, it's not intense, it's not loud, it's just very subtle. When you recreate it in the now, it's like having a room full of tuning forks and you strike the A note. All the other A's in the room are going to start to vibrate with it through the laws of resonance. And the same thing happens in your energetic field. When you strike that chord, that fear, 
Anywhere else that it is in your field, it starts to vibrate, it starts to become more intense, and that's the occasions where you have the sensation that your emotions are a bit out of balance for the situation. Have you all experienced that? Where you say, I'm a little, um, I'm a little too upset. I don't understand why I'm getting so activated by this. Normally it wouldn't be a big deal. It's because you've activated one of these other lifetimes. And it is vibrating and increasing the intensity of what you're experiencing in the now. So you've got to engage yourself. You've got to engage for right now your emotional body because it is your guidance system to tell you where you're vibrating. So when you find yourself activated, what we recommend is that you put yourself in a heart-centered space. All right, how do you get there in a heart-centered space? It doesn't take hours of meditation. It doesn't take years of learning techniques. All it takes is you thinking of something that puts a smile on your face. We recommend animals or places. If you think of people, there are often times uh, programs that are running at the subconscious level about people that you may not be aware of. So we like animals or places. So if you can all find that right now, find one for you and hold that image. And we want you to take note of how you're feeling in your body. If you found the right image, you're usually feeling lighthearted, warm, tingly, expanded, uplifted, joyful. What you do when you get yourself heart-centered, you expand your field and you open yourself up so it's as if you are standing in a tube, a data stream of information. And when you are open, you have access to your guides, you have access to your higher self, you have access to the Akashic realms, you have access to all that is. And when you're in stress, fear, worry, doubt, shame, blame, guilt, any of the lower vibrations, you shrink that field down so it's about an inch wide. So there's not a lot of information that can get through. So if you find yourself activated, acknowledge where you're at and then expand yourself. Because what you're doing is you're shifting yourself to a higher perspective so you can see why you created that fear in the first place. How is it of service to you? What was gained by the situation? And when you do that, you neutralize the charge to it. You let it go. You drop it. And it doesn't have to be difficult. It is simply a shifting of frequencies. And just because you decided to play in that frequency yesterday doesn't mean that you have to repeat it today. You can make a new vibrational choice today. All the power that you need comes from you being present. And as you move further into 2012, you're going to find that things become more and more intense. If you are letting go more and more of your judgments, it's going to be a bit easier. All right. So as you get closer and higher in frequency, when your stuff comes up, it's not as intense as it once was. For those who are sleeping, you know, as we like to say, they're hitting the snooze alarm, they're not waking up, it's going to become very, very intense because they haven't been doing their work. But each and every one of you in this room has already been doing some work. So it's not going to be quite as jarring for you. And you're aware that it's just a process for you to clear, for you to shift your vibration. If you're not awake and you see all of this stuff happening, your perception is that it's your worst fears come to light. Literally. You feel that uh, you have no power and this has just been done to you. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and open up to some questions. So where would you all like to start? The charts that you spoke of, are they in other dimensions, on other planets, in other galaxies? It is the basic structure of the universe, that it's holographic. So it is in every molecule of the universe, everything shows up. But the shards are a piece of us. It is part of our hologram? Yes, because you are source energy. And this is the really big part for you all to get, is that you're source. You are source energy. We want you to say right now, I'm source energy. I'm God. How does that feel? The second one's usually a little harder for you all because of the religious programming. For you to say, I am God, how blasphemous. But you are divine source energy. You're just a fragmented aspect so that you can have a unique perspective for the experience that you're having. So the shards that you're tapping into, because when you get outside of the third dimension, you understand the perspective that you are all part of a collective. There are subsets and different kinds of collectives. We're a collective of 2,500 beings. 
but you can think of us as one persona if that makes it easier. Even now you are part of a collective, but the unique experience that you are having on the third dimensional level says, I am separate, I am unique. I'm not connected to anyone or anything. That is the ultimate expression of duality. Because in any other dimension, you understand that you are connected and that you are source energy. So at the biggest level, yes, that shard is you and every aspect of you. You don't always have to tap into that information, all right, but it is available to you if you wish to access it. You're welcome. Do the players believe in God or do they eliminate the word God and use intelligence or higher energy? Do the Pleiadians believe in God? Well, yes, but our concept of God is different than yours, and that's one of the hardest questions for us to answer. To give you an accurate description, you you don't have the framework really to comprehend. So what we would say is just to feel it through your heart center. The mind is the filter for the third dimensional experience of reality. The creative mind is how you access source energy through the third dimension. The heart is the multi-dimensional filter. So if you think about it like a sieve, when you're given information that's multi-dimensional in nature, the mind can't handle it, it can't process it because it's not refined enough. So all the information just drops through. But the heart can handle it. So if you're having a hard time with a concept, what is God, for instance? All that is, is the easiest way we can say it to you. But if you're having a hard time mentally, see it as that piece of information as an orb of light. See it in your mind and then drop it down to your heart center. Anytime you're having a hard time digesting information, see it as that orb and drop it down. What do Palladians look like? Well, it depends on what dimension you're in, because there are Pleiadians in all dimensions. Um, we are beings of light. We do not have physical form. We do not incarnate to a planet, per se. We incarnate to a stellar body. We incarnate to Alcyon. We align with Alcyon. And that just means that our game, our objectives, our goals that we wish to experience are a bit different than your own. Each dimension is set up as a unique game with unique rules. It would be like playing basketball or soccer. You know, there are different things to experience with each. So, uh, and, and there is one other piece that we want to make sure we get out here. And that is to know that a higher dimension is not necessarily better. Let's say that again. Higher is not necessarily better. It is just different. Remember we told you, you are source energy. You have access to all the information that we have access to. You're just choosing from where you've, you're vibrating, from where you're playing the game, to not access it. But you have the ability. And when information is brought through us, or through anyone else, it is vital that you use your own discernment, that you take the bits and pieces that resonate with you. Because as you're experiencing things here, we talked about two of the filters that you have. You've got the mind of the third and the multidimensional of the heart. But as you access information, you are always filtering it through your system. So when information comes through us, we are filtering it, and then it gets filtered by the channel, and then you filter it as you interpret it. And this is why discernment is so important. You've got to take the bits and pieces that resonate. The only place where there is no filter on the information, where it's just pure raw data, is at the consciousness level of source energy. Now you can go and grab information at that level if you wish, but more often than not, you all choose not to because for you to do so will ruin the illusion of the game that you're in. See how you work? You have access to it, but it would be like somebody putting the last piece of the puzzle in. Well, where's the fun in that? <laughs> you came to have fun. And believe it or not, you all think this game is pretty terrific because it is so unlike any of the other games going on in the universe. This is the big game that everybody wanted to come to and guess what? You got the golden ticket. You got exactly the body that you wanted to have exactly the experience that you wanted to have. And you are teaching the rest of us how integration is done. And we know that's a big one for you all to 
understand because you think, oh, well, the Ascended Masters or the Pleiadians, they have all the information and, you know, we're just little peons down here. That's how you all think of it. But you are the divine ones who have all of this information that you are sharing to teach us. And we are learning from you. And that's very important for you to feel in your heart centers. There is a reason why you are called the golden ones. Because as you shift your vibrational frequency, as you shift into the higher realms, your energetic field will be golden because you are allowing your higher consciousness, your expanded being to be housed in your vehicles. You all have a sense of home and a longing that you want to go home. But this time with the game, you're not going out there. You are bringing that sensation of connectedness and home here. And that's why you came to the game. All right, well, so can I ask, how do you, the Pleiadian connection, relate to a Pleiadian light guide named Valley Star and another Pleiadian consciousness known as the Light One of the Blu-ray? Well, there are many uh, who with whom we can follow your vibrational sig signature and find their energies. It's not that we know everyone in the galaxy. We've still got to follow a thread to find it uh, because it's not necessarily within our conscious awareness at the time as we are focused on you, but we can find the energies. Uh, in many ways, their belief systems and the patternings and the games that they are playing with us are very similar. Uh, in some ways, they're very, very different. They have another agenda. Um, their energy is more is a bit more centered on some of the home worlds. Sometimes um, when you're working with different Pleiadian energies, if you're working with some of the physical beings who are actually incarnated or associated with a planetary system, their agenda is going to be different. Their game is going to be different as they interact with you. Um, so in some ways their energy is similar, some it's different. Thank you. Is there a goal to all of this? Yes, is there a goal to all of this? <laughs> to have fun. That's really the biggest goal. And that is really what you're here on the planet to do, to hold more joy in your bodies. But the game is integration. This isn't about the light extinguishing the dark or the dark extinguishing the light. This is about understanding that both the light and the dark are part of divine source energy and that this was the game that you wanted to play and so you're letting go. It's like playing cops and robbers when you're little. Uh, you know, you wake up one morning and you want to be the good guy. So you look around at your friend and you ask them if they'll play the bad guy for you. Then the next morning you wake up and you decide, I want to play the other role today. So you look around at your friend and say, will you play the other role? And so they gratefully agree. This is what happens when you incarnate and you take on a life. Those who do the most dastardly things to you are the ones who at the higher levels love you the most because they have agreed to take on the karma and the experience of playing the dark while you get to experience playing the light and vice versa. You cannot have one without the other and it would be incredibly boring for you to play the same role over and over again. At the soul level it just isn't done and you want to have a well-rounded well experience. So learning that, that it's not right or wrong to be light or dark, that both are valid expressions of source energy, but you can choose which one you want to align with. When you reach that state that's when you integrate, and that's the name of the game. That's the whole point here. What's the game of the Pleiadians? Uh, what's the game of the Pleiadians? We are here to assist you. We work with being guardians. We help beings with their spiritual growth. We, um, we play on a larger scale. Where you play with the individual lives, we help and assist planetary systems, solar systems. We are also uh, we also manage records. That is also part of our assignment. But we oversee records and the storage of information and the availability of that information to these systems. Can you tell us more about 2012? 2012. What is it? It is a window of opportunity. It is not a cut. Well, we shouldn't say that because we have said that before. Uh, that it is, in some sense, a cutoff date that you all gave yourselves because if you knew you didn't put a date on it, then you wouldn't get moving. Um. <laughs> so you say, all right, well, 2012 is coming up, so I better get on it. <laughs> that is the date that you all selected as a collective because it is a, a shifting. 
of energies and it is a window of opportunity but because you're coming through time for you just to give yourself a window you always say well I'll do it tomorrow so this was a way for you collectively to put a date on it but it is really the window of opportunity of the shifting and there are some who are not interested in going for the ride they came down full well knowing that they were not interested in going to a higher dimension that they wanted to stay in the third dimension and so they will continue onward in another system that has a similar vibration to earth but they wanted to be here for the big game and then there are those of you who are a bit on the fence he said I think I want to go I'm not really sure those are the ones who are still hitting the snooze alarm and then those who are sitting in this room who said I want to go and I want to be there to be a bridge to help other people to understand the transition and what's going on so I'm going to awaken first it's a bit like uh, being up for a while, having a coffee, having a breakfast, reading the newspaper, and then those who've been sleeping get up, they're a bit disoriented, it's like they've been yanked out of bed, and you say, take a shower, get yourself dressed, and here's where we're going. <laughs> All right, so um, it's just a time for change. And this window that you're moving through, if you want to think of it like a track, the cycle that you're on, when you've got a start and finish line painted there on the track, that finish line or that, that white line is actually the high vibrational energy we were talking about. It's photonic energy, photons, light, information. And what it does is it allows you, as you move through a cycle, to integrate the information of that cycle so that you can move on to the next one. And that's all it is. And you're moving into this time where you can integrate and it's much much easier and we don't want to talk about it too much but let us say this you all get really wrapped up about you know is the earth going to blow up is this going to happen is that going to happen you're living in infinite timelines remember we said you're constantly moving back and forth between timelines but your linear mind says well I'm just on one I don't move but you do you're constantly moving back and forth you are putting yourself into vibrational alignment with the version that you want to have the experience of. So if you want to have a less dramatic version and that's where you're vibrationally in alignment, that means that you're letting go of more of your fears, that you're trusting that you're supported, that you understand that you are a divine being, that you are constantly manifesting your reality. It doesn't matter what's going on with the government. It doesn't matter what's going on with your neighbors. What matters is what's going on with you. And if you want to create the greatest change in your community, that starts with making changes within you. Because remember, you're holographic. You don't have to go out and change the minds of everyone else. You can never do that. They have to choose to be in that vibrational state. But what you can do for yourself is to change your own vibrational frequency and put yourself on that timeline where you are in vibrational alignment with that desire with what you want to create and what you want to manifest and that's why you get all different kinds of predictions about what's coming because one it depends on the level of consciousness of the person who is access accessing that record at the, and the time that they're accessing it because you have so many major choices that you're making in the last couple of years here that you know 20 years ago you maybe would have had five choices to make in a year now you've got 105 and then all major choices. So, you know, it may have a 2% probability that you're going to take a leap of faith and say, all right, I'm ready to make this big change. And this is the time, because you're being bathed in this energy, that it's easier to do it. So 98% probability says you're going to make this choice. You, because you like the challenge, are going to take that 2%. And so for us to tell you something's going to happen, you've completely changed the timeline. It gets very, very hard for us to see. And this is why we say we don't know what's going to happen because we cannot tell what choices you are going to make in the moment. Because this has never been done before where a planet has gone through ascension with conscious beings on it. And Earth is the grand experiment. And as you make change, as all of you learn to integrate, you are sending that information off throughout the entire universe. And what happens when that information becomes available? It changes the entire universal game. All right? So, we want to thank you for the opportunity to learn from all of you today. Remember, even though we're imparting information, uh, we're just reminding you of things that you already know about yourselves and that you are the true ones with all the power down here. Don't give it away. All right, trust in yourselves, trust in your ability to create, be in the now, and pay attention to what it is that you are manifesting for yourselves. 
So dears, we're around, we're watching, we're waiting, and we're sending many well wishes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.